So, in this next example, you'll be told to read on the stationary points of the function f of x, y is equal to y squared plus 2x squared minus 2xy plus 14y plus 8 and classify them, isn't it? So as usual, the first case is to is to determine the special is to find the partial derivatives, isn't it? So the first partial derivative here we differentiate partially with respect to x. x y is a function. If you say z is a function of x and y, so the first partial derivative is we are doing it partially with respect to x, isn't it? So when we are differentiating partially with respect to x, only x is a variable, anything else is a constant, isn't it? So here it means y squared is a constant when we are doing it partially with respect to x, isn't it? So when you differentiate a constant, you get 0. Then here, partially with respect to x, you get 2 times 2 for x. Then here, partially with respect to x, it means negative 2y is a constant, isn't it? So if you differentiate x, you get 1, isn't it? So there you remain with minus 2. Then 14y is a constant because we are doing it partially with respect to x, isn't it? If you differentiate a constant, you get 0. If you differentiate a constant, you get 0. Anywhere you don't see x, it's a constant. And if you differentiate a constant, it's 0, isn't it? So if the first time we did it with respect to x, then it means the first time here is with respect to x, the second time we can do it again with respect to x, isn't it? So if you are doing it for the second time with respect to x, only x is a variable. So if you differentiate 4x, you get 4. Are we together? If you differentiate negative 2y, you get 0. Because anything, anything which does not have x is a constant. Are we together? Then you go again. If the first time we did it partially with respect to x and we got this, then we can now differentiate this again partially with respect to y, isn't it? So if we differentiate this now partially with respect to y, what do we get? Meaning only y is now a variable, everything else is a constant. So it means this 4x is now a constant. If you differentiate a constant, you get 0, isn't it? If you differentiate this negative 2y partially with respect to y, we get negative 2. Are we together? We are done with that. We move to the next, the next one. We now want to differentiate it partially with respect to y. We want to differentiate this function partially with respect to y, meaning only y is considered a variable. Anything else is a constant, isn't it? So if you differentiate y squared partially with respect to y, you get 2y, because only y is a variable, isn't it? Here, this term does not have y, so it means it is a constant, 0, see here? Then this term, only y is a variable, meaning this minus 2x is a constant, isn't it? If you differentiate y, you get 1, so you remain with negative 2x. Then if you differentiate 14y partially with respect to y, you get 14, because y is a variable, isn't it? If you differentiate 8 is a constant, you get 0. So it means when we differentiate this function partially with respect to y, this is what we end up with, isn't it? So it means, when we've done it partially with respect to y, it implies what? We can now do it for the second time. The first time we've done it partially with respect to y, the second time we can do it with respect to y again, isn't it? Are we together? So we are now differentiating this with respect to y again to get f y y. So only y is a variable. Anything else is a constant. So if you differentiate two y, only y is a variable. You remain with two. Negative two x. There is no y here. Meaning negative two x is a constant, isn't it? And 14 is a constant. So if you are differentiating this constant, you get zero. You get zero because only y is a variable. You are differentiating partially with respect to y. Okay. And you go again, the first time we did it partially with respect to y, the second time we now want to do it partially with respect to, and we are supposed to get this same one, negative 2. Because we say, when you start with x followed by y, it's the same as starting with y followed by x, isn't it? So when we are doing it partially with respect to x, we check only x is a variable. Meaning this 2y is a constant. So if you differentiate a constant, you get 0, isn't it? If you differentiate negative 2x partially with respect to x, you get negative 2. If you differentiate a constant you get 0. So we remain with the negative 2. This one will always be the same as this, isn't it? Are we together? So once we have the four partial, then all the six partial derivatives, 
The first thing we do is to determine the stationary points. And for you to determine the stationary point, at the stationary point, the derivative is zero, isn't it? So at the stationary point, the derivative is zero. So at the stationary point, the derivative partial with respect to x or the derivative partial with respect to y is, is zero. Because we have two derivatives here, either with respect to x or with respect to y. So when the derivative is zero, then we are defining a stationary point. So substitute. What is partial with respect to x? What have you found? 4x minus 2y. To be equal to? Zero. Are we together? Partial with respect to y, what have you found? Minus 2x plus 14 is equal to? Zero. Are we together? So you can see, we start by simplifying this first part here. C2 is a common factor. So if we divide everything by 2, minus is equal to 0, we divide all to move equation 1 by 2, isn't it? Then equation 2, you can see equation 2, you rearrange by starting with the x. So look here. See this one has started with x. See this one, we also start with x. So here we have minus 2x followed by this positive 2y, isn't it? Then positive 14 going on the other side, it becomes, because these two equations are linear, see there? Are we together? So what do you see here? So there is no need of eliminating removing the common factor because here we have 2, here we also have 2, meaning we can use elimination very simply. Elimination is very simple, isn't it? Are you seeing that? So here we have minus 2x plus 2y is equal to negative 14. Though 2 is a common factor, yes, we can divide all 2 by negative 2, but we are going to remain with x. But here we have 2x, so there is no need because this 2x, that is 2x, meaning we can use elimination method. Are we together? Are you trying to, to see what I'm trying to explain? Eh? Yes. Good. So, there's no need of dividing all 2 by 2, a common factor, you remain with x. But when we have 2x, 2x, we can either add them or subtract them to eliminate x, isn't it? Are we together? So, what do we do here? Because this is positive, this is negative, meaning if we add them, we will eliminate x. Say So, 2x plus negative 2x is 0, isn't it? Are we together? You see, when we subtract them, we will get 2x minus negative 2x, we will get 4x. Subtraction does not work. We put them different signs, isn't it? Okay? Then, negative y plus 2y. Eh? What? You are saying? Okay, this done one, 2 is also a common factor, we can divide by 2, but I will not divide by 2, because I am seeing this is 2x, this is also 2x, so elimination method is easier, instead of substitution, that's why I am not dividing by 2. Are you seeing what I was trying to do? Though 2 is a common factor, we can divide by 2, yes, when we want to use substitution, but I am seeing in this case, elimination is easier, there is no need of going to substitution, isn't it? Are we together? So this plus this is 0, negative y plus 2y, you get y. Negative y plus, plus 2y, if you factorize out y, you remain with negative 1 plus 2. So then you remain with y. Then, 0 plus negative 14. See, you found y direct. y is negative 14. So if y is equal to negative 14, then it means you use any of the equations to get the value of x, isn't it? Meaning y well, is why you put negative 14 to give you the value of x, isn't it? Are we together? So use any equation. So we can even use this first one. 2x minus y is equal to 0. So from there, so you can see 2x is equal to y. Negative y when the other side becomes positive y. 2x is equal to y, isn't it? Are we together? So what is x? So you divide both sides by 2. So that implies x is y over 2. But what is your y? So you are substituting, you are substituting the value of y. y is negative 14. So negative 14 over 2 you get? Negative 7. So what is your stationary point? Your stationary point x, y. It is one stationary point, isn't it? 
because you want linear equations. If the equations are not linear, you get more than one stationary point. But if the equations are linear, then they automatically it is one stationary point, isn't it? Are we together? So what do we have here? The x value you found to be negative 7 and the y value you found to be negative 14. So we found our stationary point here is negative 7, negative 14. Are we together? Good. Now having found that stationary point, the next thing they want us to do is to classify, to classify that stationary point, doesn't it? So for us to classify it, we use the determinant of the Hessian matrix to define the discriminant, isn't it? If the determinant of the Hessian matrix is greater than zero, then that means the discriminant is less than zero, and the other vice versa, isn't it? One is opposite of the other. Are we together? So here you can see you have the function of x and y. So it means when we are looking for the de determinant of the Hessian matrix, we have two variables. It is a two by two matrix, isn't it? So a two by two matrix, what is the determinant? You can see these two strokes imply determinant, isn't it? What is the determinant? You put your f's, it is the matrix of second order partial derivative. So you define row first. So x comes first, x forms the first row. Are we together? So the first row you define. Y comes second, y forms the second row. Second row is y. First row is x, second row is y. Are we together? See, we are done with row. We now define the column. We start afresh, isn't it? So for column, the first column, you start with the first one, x, isn't it? The first column is x. So this first column is x. x, x. We are done with the first column. Then the second column is y. y, y, y. We are done with the second. So we now have our Asian matrix. So once we have that, we now start with the first point. What is our point? Negative 7, negative 14. So we want to classify this point, isn't it? So to classify this point, what is the determinant of the Asian matrix of this point? What is f of xs? Is? Is 4. You substitute it there. What is f of xy? Negative 2. What is f of yx? Must be the same as that, isn't it? Negative 2, and you have it here. Then f of yy? 2. If you have any case which is not a constant, you substitute the value from the point, isn't it? Are we together? So can you now get rid of this determinant product of the elements in the main diagonal minus product of the elements in the other diagonal? You get it to be? You get it to be? I hope you are using that over in the right way. You know, some of you don't usually score the marks required because of the calculator you are using. You get 4, isn't it? So, 4 implies what? It implies that the determinant of the Asian matrix is greater than because 4 is greater than 0. So, if the determinant of the Asian matrix is greater than 0, it implies that the discriminant is less than 0 because we say that the discriminant is the same as negative determinant of the Asian matrix, isn't it? So, it means when the determinant of the Asian matrix is 4, it means the discriminant is negative 4, isn't it? Are we together? And the negative 4 is less than what? Yes. So when the discriminant is less than 0, what is the nature of the stationary point? Turning? Turning point. So when the determinant of the stationary point is greater than 0, or when the discriminant is less than 0, then it is a turning? Turning point. You simply come and say you are discriminant is negative, determinant of the stationary matrix, which is negative into the 4. The determinant was 4, meaning the discriminant is negative 4. And you can see negative 4 is less than. Are you seeing you found the, the, the discriminant without doing that other method which you can confuse, isn't it? So, a turning point. So, for us to get the nature of a turning point, the first principle minimum, f of xx, x, isn't it? So, what is f of xx? X? Come and record it. What was f of xx? X? What was it? 4. What is 4? 4 is greater than. So, when it is greater than, it's the opposite, isn't it? Greater than means many, minimum point. Are we together? So, this first principle minimum is greater than zero. Then it implies that this our point, negative 4, negative 7, negative 14, is a minimum, is a minimum, is a minimum point. When the second 
Crazy for minimum is greater than zero, it is a minimum point. If it is less than zero, it is a maximum point. So, that is the reason why I'm putting the determinant of the Hessian matrix together with the discriminant so that you don't confuse because this determinant of the Hessian matrix will sometimes confuse, isn't it? Once you get the determinant of the Hessian matrix to be zero, you check the discriminant to be the opposite of what you found. Are you seeing that? But when it is equal to, that one is undefined. You cannot compute that point. Are you seeing? Are we together? So once the determinant of this matrix is greater than zero, then automatically you know discriminant is less than zero. And when discriminant is less than zero, it is the turning point. So you just look at this point. When you found H to be 4, then you see this implies discriminant is negative 4 because it is discriminant is negative of that determinant. Are we together? Is that okay? Very good. So that is how to handle such kind of problem.